What's going on, everyone? Happy Saturday morning, a little uh, abbreviated edition of BYP. We like to call it a cute cap. Uh, Rich Quinone is here. Thanks for uh, checking us out. And as always, like, comment, smash that uh, button on YouTube where you just tapped it, baby. So a lot of stuff to get into. Follow me on um, social media at Rich Q on Q. And as I mentioned, it's a Saturday, a little abbreviated edition. Yeah, we got a little cafe con leche. By the way, the weather finally today is like breaking uh, uh, on the East Coast. Hopefully we don't get hammered like what's going on in Buffalo. Hopefully we don't get it for the holidays. By the way, speaking of which, so we kind of started the week off uh, talking a lot of NFL and rightfully so. Lloyd Vance jumped on our NFL insider and we kind of went around the league and he always likes to give out his uh, game balls and his lackey who is basically uh you know just a scrubbiness type of play where you're just like oh my god you got to be kidding me with this nonsense right and then the game ball who thrived it's a unique segment and it's interesting because uh, we just don't take it from an individual sometimes it's a team sometimes it's a coaching and kind of led us into the conversation really of um just the leadership and, and a lack thereof and when you start talking about the coaching in the NFL. I mean, look what's going on in Denver with Hackett, even to some extent in um, Los Angeles with the Chargers. And then you can also turn around with the Raiders and McDaniel. So it was an interesting uh, segment. Lloyd's always a good get. Uh, we also kind of did our whip around. We recapped and looked ahead as well. We gave some plays out as well. Uh, then on um, Tuesday, we talked uh, uh, pretty much we did like a little battle Philly versus 95, kind of that uh, New York, I should say, kind of that 95 clash. Uh, Tony Cotillo from uh, Heat Ratio uh, Sports, who does a real nice job. And he was giving out his gambling philosophy as well. But we were going a little back and forth. I mean, what more can I really say with the Eagles uh, absolutely annihilating my Giants on Sunday? But we highlighted the fact that Jalen Hurts and the national media, there seems to be this narrative painting around the Philadelphia Eagles that they're not as good as their record states, that Jalen Hurts is not as good as um, he's been playing. And, and we both, you know, we, we agree. It's crock of crap. You know, we call people out on it. I mean, that's, that's how it should be. You have to play who's on your schedule and you have to give credit where credit is due. And I thought Tony brought up some really good points where he's like, enough is enough. Like, just accept this. This kid is in the MVP race, and this team is arguably the best team in the NFC, let alone the NFL. And I actually um, have no problem with that at all. I agree wholeheartedly. It was a really entertaining segment. I think you guys will like it. Then you jump to Wednesday. We tried to get over to hunt with our guy, Jovan Alford. And again, we took it from a Philly standpoint. We talked NBA, and we really got into the fact that I believe the window is closing on the Philadelphia 76ers. And we start to go through, you know, the current roster and doc and the rest in the Eastern Conference. Quinn Stanley, enough, when you think about it, uh, Philly has won four in a row, seven out of three. They just beat Golden State on Friday night, 118-106, and beat dominant again, 33. Shorthanded Warriors team, of course. Um, but he's averaging 39 points for the month of December, which is utterly ridiculous. Uh, you know, we argued for years, built around this guy. So, uh, we're going to see how it plays out with the Sixers. You got the big one if you're a Nets fan last night over the Raptors, Kyrie with the uh, step back three at the buzzard, as we like to say. They have won eight out of their last 10. And don't look now, but my Knicks, six in a row, uh, seven to three in their last 10. So they're playing good basketball in the Eastern Conference. I still think it's going to be a one-two race between um, Milwaukee and Boston. Then fast forward to Thursday. Uh, so we double dipped on that one. Brandon Bell, uh, former uh, captain with Penn State, great linebacker, played in the NFL. We talked a little bit about Micah Parsons' comments and how he was kind of um, dismissing Jalen Hurts. Uh, you know, is it the scheme? Is it the player? And Brandon said, look, man, the NFL position, right, the, the quarterback position in the NFL, it's a tough gig. And he is playing at such a high level where you just – he can see what – Parsons is saying, but he just, he's not buying into it. Uh, but then we gave a little love to the linebackers and we highlighted the fact that it seems like the linebacking position is a lost art in the NFL. Obviously that didn't sit well with uh, Brandon because he played the linebacker position in college and the pros. But my point was because he is a football savant like I am, and he works with NFL films and he played in the league and played in college, he knows that position. He played that position. He can rip off linebackers all over. 
the novice fan, a lot of people can. It seems as though we don't really highlight the linebacker position anymore. And you look what Parsons is doing in Dallas. You know, he's a hybrid. I mean, I, I'm not ready yet to stick him in the category of LT. And that's something we debated. I just think he's had a cup of coffee, let it play out. Uh, and I understand teams are game planning for a guy like Parsons, but listen, LT is LT. So that was a good segment. Thursday, we really hit hard the sports gambling element of BYP. Uh, Ryan Kramer, Sports Gambling Podcast Network, join us. That was a fun segment. Uh, he is a uh, disheartened Giant fan as well. We gave a nice play out for Thursday Night Football. We were all over San Francisco on the road against Seattle. We knew Geno was going to revert back. We knew Seattle kind of peaked uh, in their win against the uh, Giants a couple uh, weeks ago. And he was talking about his philosophy and what they talk about on the uh, Sports Gambling uh, podcast. And it's really interesting because they have systems, you know, again, a lot of the analytics. Uh, I know some betters and gamblers kind of go for feel, kind of go with their gut. And, you know, sometimes there's a contrarian takes, but we highlighted five games. So if you check out that video right now, you have plenty of time. We highlighted five games for this weekend. Obviously, you have to um, wipe out the Thursday night game. If uh, you caught us Thursday night after we posted it, then you put a little coin in the pocket. And then Friday, we capped off the week of back your play with Lake Lewis, who for about 20 plus years has covered the Washington football franchise. The Washington Commanders does a great job as a ABC News affiliate anchor down there in West Virginia, Virginia, D.C. area. And I, I really just kind of wanted to know with him, you know, what do you attribute this change around uh, by Washington? And he said, look, the quarterback, Tyler Heineke, gives him a spark. Uh, Ron Rivera, who I personally said should have been on the hot seat a month ago, uh, Lake said, listen, he commands the locker room. They believe in the head coach. They're buying into the system. Talked a little bit about their defense, but he brought up a real interesting point, too. Heineke is the quarterback going forward. Uh, they'll deal with that in the offseason. But we talked a little bit about Carson Wentz, right? And it's amazing. He goes from franchise quarterback, gets hurt against the Rams. Foles comes in, takes him to the Super Bowl. They beat the Pats. Boom, there you go with the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, benched late in his Eagles tenure. They open up the door to uh, Jalen Hurts. Carson Wentz goes to Indianapolis, basically you know, forces it. If you think about it, uh, that doesn't pan out. Everyone thought he was going to be that potential franchise quarterback or that bridge in Washington. And that hasn't even panned out. And now he's holding a clipboard and Lake and I agree. I think his days as a starting quarterback in the NFL are pretty much over. All right. So there you have it. That was our uh, QCAP for BYP for the week that was so good stuff. Check out the videos as we always like to say, just tap it, smash a baby. Check us out um, again, Rich Q on Q. Subscribe, like, comment, share. Uh, if you disagree with us, that's not a problem. We get a lot of comments. We like to go back and forth. We never take it personal. And don't forget also, in addition to that, the uh, 27 and Q podcast that I host with the big man, two times Super Bowl champ, number 27, Brandon Jacobs. We do that twice during the week, sometimes three on our separate page, 27 and Q. But uh, as always, we appreciate everyone uh, checking us out tomorrow. Uh, we'll uh, do a little Sunday edition of BYP. We'll get you some NFL plays. You got three on the docket today. So we'll see how that plays out. And a lot of these games already, this is why you love this time of year, folks, playoff implications, right? And then uh, you got a big one Sunday night with the Giants and Washington. The Eagles sit there and they got the Chicago Bears. So we'll give you some plays tomorrow as well before kickoff. As always, we appreciate everyone keeping us locked in as we like to say to get out of here on a Saturday. If you say it, play it. If you back it, you're going to stack it. Thanks for watching a Saturday edition, a little QCAP of Back Your Play. Have a good Saturday. Enjoy it. Get some fresh air. Enjoy the football. And we'll talk to you right back here Sunday before the games.